Hello, you're listening to Sparrow Speaks. My name is Sparrow. My pronouns are he, him, and they, they, theirs. And this is your reminder to drink some water. Today, I wanted to talk about my perception of souls. Um, most likely, it'll be a two-parter. Um, but we'll see where it goes. Um, I've been building this idea up for the last few years. I want to say it's been one of my first, like, philosophical journeys, like a question I've been wanting to know for myself. And I think it's really interesting, so I guess I'm going to dive right into it. <laughs> I cannot wait until um, I start to speed up with this stuff, like... Don't get me wrong, the more unpolished my vlog, the more powerful I am. Oh, I did just get a tripod that I liberated from Five Below because screw those guys. They steal Paul Sunset and Sage from indigenous lands. Um, but backtracking. Oh yeah, I'm funny as hell, you guys. Um, but I get I get nervous. <laughs> um, you would not believe the progress I've made. Um, I used to never feel comfortable really uh, talking on a screen. Sure, being on a screen, but not talking. Um, which probably has to do with my voice dysphoria, which has gotten a lot better. But anyway, souls. Um, so every, every person is made of stardust. And so I kind of think of souls as being older souls, as being sedimentary rocks. Like when you, when you die, your soul is shattered, um, in its own miniature big bang. And... Then, in your next life, bits and pieces come back together. And the bigger a star you are, and that's not a judgment, it's just each star is a different size. Um, but depending on your size, the more people you you become I guess after you die um, I'm gonna do this a little out of order but I had written something a couple weeks back when I was a little elevated um, and writing poetry and stuff Never be afraid to be big. Yes, you will fall harder, but when you shatter, your soul becomes millions. Make Makes it easier to find yourself again. And so Duncan Trussell, somebody tag him because one day I would love to like just talk with him, sit down and talk with him, but... Uh, he believes that we have multiple reincarnations in each lifetime. And I wanted to think about that for a while. Um, and I realized that if that's true, and I do believe it to be true, I just don't feel like, I, I don't know what he thinks, but I don't think it's your entire being that reincarnates. I believe that what decides where each part of a soul goes is um, a, a cord, a connection to another person. So when someone dies that you were close to or just had any sort of relationship with, um, if that cord had not been severed before they passed, I just realized I drew a walrus on my hand today. 
it's faded. <laughs> but, um, yeah, when they die, part of them goes to you. And the same goes for when you pass. I believe we have like a main core. And now I don't fully understand that, but I also believe that a soul is literally like the essence of magic. And I kind of don't want science to ever figure out what magic or a soul is. I, I believe some things are meant to be left unknown, even though I do feel like science and magic are like one and the same. Science just hasn't been able to explain the entirety of magic. Um, I can go on more about perceptions in another episode, but in this episode, episode seven, I'm reminding myself, um, I feel like your core, you can decide for yourself, like where you go in your next life. If you want to be soul soup for a while, as I heard someone else put it, um, and just spend time in the astral for a while, that could happen. I believe we have astral past lives as well as um, Earth past lives. And so, like, where I personally want to go after is to spend time with my astral family, um, just for a little. Um, but not everyone is intentional with their death, of course, because they don't really know about it. And I could be wrong. Um, but... Uh, I believe if your soul wants to be with someone, it will go to them. I believe if you want to be reincarnated, like, through a family member's child, like, you can do that. I've seen that happen before. Um, because they want to, like, be with that person. And I believe heaven and hell are both on earth, so... I believe if you want to be, if you believe that you deserve to be punished, then you will experience hell. Um, probably not through the astral. I mean, maybe, but um, I think you would be reincarnated into a life where you felt you deserved to be punished. Um, I'll I'll go back to this um, maybe in part two if that's how far it goes we're at like almost a nine minute mark now uh you like the uh captain blackbeard looking shirt <laughs> i do I'm very add tonight but i'm also a little a little faded and it's late I, I want to get better at filming earlier, but my main point is just to get it done if I have the spoons. Which is why I'm back inside. But. Oh yeah, I believe our connections fall into these four categories. <laughs> um, a twin flame, a soulmate, a karmic connection though technically all of them are under the umbrella of karmic connection and NPC, I believe. And some people believe twin flames are the same thing as a soulmate. Maybe a twin flame is a type of soulmate. From my experiences and the people around me's experience, it's a little bit different. But... Yeah, so I believe a soulmate, and you can have a platonic soulmate. I've had those before. Um, 
is like a piece a big piece of your like soul or like a a deep connection you had made um i just had a thought hold on let me try to log that <laughs> um a deep connection you made in a past life and so you reconnect and you're very close um that doesn't mean that you'll stay together or or that you stay together your entire lives i have stopped being friends with platonic soulmates before um but you know we're all growing so that's natural it doesn't i i think we like the idea of a soulmate so much because we think oh we're bonded for life there's no way we can um stop being close and i feel like that's a very western idea a very uh especially like u.s idea um that you'll be with someone your whole lifetime um and it just doesn't go that way sometimes but yeah so that's what i believe a soulmate is um i believe a twin flame is like oh like imagine if your core was split perfectly in two um it's like a soulmate but they're the yin and yang so when you meet this person you're extremely identical because you're mirrors but you have something about you that is opposite and that causes tension now in the situations where you see a twin mate so a twin flame relationship sticking through is when you were able to come together and overcome that extreme difference together um so twin flames can be for life or they can end really badly um or you might never get into a relationship at all because the difference was so toxic um something about humans that i don't think a lot of us think about is they might have come out like their soul might have come out identical to you but we all go through different um lives that change us over time um sometimes the differences are too far to to pass um Kind of like how when they separated the left brain and the right brain, they found out that they could be two different personalities. Like, the two sides of you uh, can be, can start off very different, want different desires. And so when the lives come into the world, they change. Um, I hope that made sense. But so, like, when I'm talking about a karmic connection, I'm talking more so about um, a payment that needs to be made, whether small or big. If we're thinking romantically or like a close loved one, then it's a, a a bigger debt but these are people who don't necessarily get along they're just with each other until the time that that debt is um cleared um and some people because they're so afraid of being abandoned they stick in that connection um maybe even past the point of it of you supposing to have that and, and maybe the debt never really gets settled and it goes on to another life um i'm trying to think of some examples 
the because the example I'm thinking of goes into the fourth category of NPC, which is just people you your soul none of your soul is bonded with in this life or past life. You've never met them before, and they don't really matter in your life. Now you can make a connection with an NPC, and that will bond you. And I'm sure. Um, the more lives you spend together, um, the, the stronger the connection because you've, uh, you've been mixed up together more often, uh, sedimentary rocks. There's, there's a whole nother, like, idea I have behind the the physics, the gravity that goes into people coming into each other's lives or just manifestations coming into our lives. Um, but I will try to, uh, I don't know if I have time for that in this conversation because we're getting a little past the 16 minute point. I hope you can hear me all right. Oh, but so like a small connection that you could make with someone um, is like I put a Facebook thing up for New Year's Eve or whatever and it was like, oh, if you comment down below, um, I'll give you a free book. And I believe there were two people um, that asked for books and I either gave none of them or only one of them a book. And so if one of us dies before that goes, then we, our paths would come across each other again in another life um, where we had to return a book to someone, give someone a book, or I don't know, maybe it's not that specific. Maybe it can be another item of equivalence. Um, but like a bigger example, would be like maybe you were abusive towards um, a loved one and you still stay connected. So then when you come back into each other's lives, you would have to um, repay that. Um, I definitely have people in my life who I feel like they are one of my family members or they were in my life because they were someone who had punished me in a past life and they needed to repay that. Um, and same thing goes the other way. There are people who I punished in past lives who I had to repay that for. And you ever notice how some relationships just dissolve like when it's done, it's done. Um, I think that's really the feeling of like, oh crap, like our karma settled. And I haven't really studied the Hindu idea of karma. So I'm really only scratching the surface of what that means. But same goes the other way. If you did something good in your past life, someone could repay you in um, this life. Now I'm thinking about it and I realize that there are probably examples of people who get away with being greedy and selfish and nothing bad happens to them and they don't repay anybody. Well, it's not that it doesn't exist. It's that that payment, like it's a tab. It'll go on to the next life. You don't spend each past, like each life with all of the same soul chunks. Um, it's just the ones that suit your, your purposes. Um, But it's not as though it doesn't exist. It's just their soul's not elevating on that way. I realized um, 
at least for me personally, when these soul connections rebond, or I mean, when the karma is healed, uh, settled. I don't want to say healed because karma has got this bad rap of like, oh, you like unalive somebody, so now you're going to get unalive or like kidnapped and tortured or something. I don't know. Um, but as I'm saying with the people who have avoided their karma in that life, like it's really up to you what direction you're going. Um, I'll explain that more in the next episode. Oh yeah, but within twin flame relationships, because sometimes they do become toxic. Um, nothing like that is nothing to say about the, the people who are being toxic in that situation. It just happens sometimes. But when that happens, you collect um, karma through that relationship, through every life you live together. Like maybe three times in a row, you reconnected and broke apart in some tragic way, flames. <laughs> it's very passionate. Um, so then that's gonna be three life's worth of karmic debt or whatever you wanna call it. So every time I was in a twin flame relationship and every time a debt was healed, um, or resolved, I, one of us, our souls, we kind of have like an upgrade, like wings or a tail or whatever. Um, and I guess this brings you closer to your higher self. Um, but yeah, all this is to say, because it's about 23 minutes, all this is to say, like, cut your cords if you don't want this person in your life in, within one of your next incarnations. Um, oh, and one of the other examples of places you can go after you die is you become like an animal or a tree or something. And looking how hard it is to be a human for some, I can see why someone would want to take a break as a dog for a while. And that could be um, a karmic debt that's being resolved is someone has to be that pet's owner and heal that relationship. Um, and some people have spent most of their lives in the astral. Some people have spent most of their lives um, on Earth, but not as a human. And some people have spent a lot of their lives as a human. Um, so that will change the spacing between lives. That'll change your characteristics. Like if you see an, an animal that's like very human-like, it's like, yeah, that, they were probably a human just recently or enough to remember. Uh, dang, I'm going to let this one be a little longer because I also wanted to say... I do believe that as your soul becomes more, what's the word for it, enlightened, closer to your um, higher self, I guess that means your higher self is a deity or some higher power. Um, so you can get parts of reincarnations of deities or like whatever you believe in pop culture deities um
cryptid. That's what I was thinking of, like a Cthulhu kind of uh, creature. Uh, it'll come back to me later. But you can have parts of their re uh, of them in you, and so I I don't think it's like a bad thing when you're like. Oh yeah, I'm like this deity's child. Like I do believe that's possible, and I have to get into that in another episode because that's a whole nother conversation. But yeah, I'm gonna cut this off before I think of more things. I will be right back. <laughs> 